Blog Talk Radio. Om Shabbat Shalom, Holy Way of the Most High. Om Shabbat Shalom, I sense your presence. Om Shabbat Shalom, Holy Way of the Most High. Om Shabbat Shalom, I sense your presence. And I am the light within your soul In the essence of truth and right Love makes the circle whole And here we stand in line Waiting for some sacred sign But to find the balance is the purpose of this time to restore the balance of the universal mind And in the presence of my Lord of light and love Everything I see aspiring to be free And when I call to thee And come on bending knee Surrender to the all-pervading light and love Reflections of the one surrounding me with love And I sense your presence I sense your presence I sense your presence I sense your presence Within and without, above and below, yeah. East, west, north, and south, I sense your presence. Without and within, below and above, yeah, yeah. East, west, north, and south, I sense your presence. I sense your presence. Shabbat 
God's own Holy Angel of the Most High Om Shabbat Shalom I sense your presence I sense your presence And thank you for joining me here on Activating Compassion Radio My name is Jesse Ann Nichols-George and I'm your hostess today The music you were listening to there at the beginning of the show is I Sense Your Presence It's by Shem Shai And you can definitely check out more of their work. They really have a nice, wonderful selection of music. And you can check that out at www.shemshai.com, S-H-I-M-S-H-A-I.com. And I just want to extend a welcome to everybody that's with us today, whether you're joining us for the very first time or whether you've listened to the show and you're joining us uh, because you like what we do here on Activating Compassion Radio. We are, by the way, streaming live in three additional places, so I want to say hi to everybody out there at TalkStream Live, StreamFinder, and Penn, also known as Pair Encounters Network, and also those that are catching the show as an archive through, say, TuneIn.com, iTunes, or also through the YouTube channel. So I welcome everybody through those areas as well. Here at Activating Compassion Radio, I look at the different ways that compassion exists in our lives, how do we move our blocks, resistances, frustrations, and more? Some weeks I'm discussing different aspects of how compassion is in our life and how it affects the different areas of our life. And then some weeks I'm doing more exercises and practical implementations. And then many times I have guests on the show, and that way you get a chance to learn how other people's work is complementing and working with the principles of compassion. And I also highlight different musical artists along the way. In the past, I've had Stephen Halpern, Peter Cater, uh, both Grammy nominees there, Jill uh, Matson, Claire Hedin, Bruce Ciccarelli, Craig Corollas, Harold Grandstaff Moses, Stands with Bear, um, working on a few others this year, so you'll have those to look forward to. In my own work, I focus on helping people find and use compassion in their everyday lives. I've created the Genesis Clearing Statement. If you've missed that, you can catch that through interviews that other people have done of me or in our archives. You'll find that. I've authored also four books, the most recent being You, Me, Life, Dreams, and its companion workbook, and then my first two books, Activating Compassion and its companion workbook. In addition, I've created the Compassion Tour, which is a multi-state nationwide tour, including workshops, retreats, seminars, book signing events, and fundraising events. And you can follow all of those through my website at jessianicholsgeorge1.com. That's just below our show description today. And uh, I've got a huge list of events going on, and I've only hit like the first half of the year. <laughs> and a uh, matter of fact, uh, starting up in about two weeks, I'm going to be in the Ojai, California area. Um, following that, I'm going to be in the San Francisco Bay area of California, moving on up to Portland, Oregon, then up around the Leavenworth, uh, Washington area, headed over to Denver, Colorado, um, going into South Dakota and to the Black Hills region, and then also over into Illinois, the eastern part of Illinois. Um, We'll see what else jobs around in there. I know I've got venues up in Michigan, Traverse City, Michigan. And then there will also be things around Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania um, that are still all in the process of being posted. So you can watch as those get added along the way. And also a reminder, if you enjoy the show today, Make certain you tell your friends, you know, people out there, even just share it on social media because I have a ton of connections that I find that every time I share something, somebody goes, oh, my gosh, I was just having this conversation or I really need to break through this core issue that I have going on. I heard that a a, a few times this week, actually, and people are like, I just really need help breaking through this, so this is perfect. And you never know. You know, you might change somebody's life in that process of just clicking the share button. I do keep all the archive shows, by the way, on my website, and then again, people can also catch them at iTunes, TuneIn.com, and my YouTube channel. So whatever your preference is, you've got an option for it. Now, before we get started, those that have listened before, you know I like to delve into a little book called The 72 Names of God and pull a little message for the week. And by the way, this message does also go up on my page of the Main Street Universe tab on my website. Again, Jesse Ann Nichols, George, the number one dot com. And you can go back and reflect on it throughout the week. So that's kind of cool. I like to do those things, have my little weekly messages and, 
and have my different focuses from week to week, which is kind of fun to keep everything changed up and keep me thinking. So the message this week from Yehuda Berg, and he's he's a really wonderful Kabbalah master, um, is about no guilt. And I think this is going to be great fitting in with our guest today. And the initial message he has is, repentance purifies. It cancels judgments, and it annuls sentences of death decreed against us in the upper world. The insight he gives on this is, the concept of repentance is vastly misunderstood. It has nothing to do with a guilt trip or fear. Repentance is about repairing prior misdeeds by feeling the pain that we've caused to others and by abolishing the actual negative trait responsible for their hurt. Through the power of repentance, our souls journey back to the precise moment prior to our spiritual infraction. The damage is then undone, provided we have meditated with deep remorse to eradicate the character trait that originally induced our offense. So how does this alleviate the suffering of the victim of our crime? Kabbalah says there are no victims. The person who was injured by a misdeed warranted this negative act as a result of a misdeed that he or she committed at a prior time. Our own pain and repentance are not the result of hurting an innocent victim. Rather, our remorse pertains to our being chosen as the executioner of the sentence, the deliverer of a judgment that was already decreed against the person. And the pain we agree to take on is used to cleanse the nasty trait that led us to be a courier for wrongdoing in the first place. A person who is spiritually pure and righteous will never be selected to execute judgment against a fellow human being. And the meditation that he gives on this is, recall any negative deeds from your past. Reflect on some of your more unpleasant traits. Feel the pain of the people you have hurt. Ask the light to eradicate all your negative attributes. The force called repentance spiritually repairs your past sins and diminishes the dark side of your nature. It's really kind of a big thing to think about, and there's a lot of big concepts in there. And uh, you know, if you have questions on that, you're welcome to message me through Facebook or something. And I'll be happy to <laughs> to address what I can on that because it really does delve into a lot of different little pieces of universal laws in there. Now, a little insight and a little thought here before we jump into working with our guest today. How many of you have sat in that space feeling like no matter what you are trying, no matter what you try, you're getting nowhere? Or maybe you feel like you're running in circles because you keep taking action and nothing seems to come of it. Have you ever tried numerous affirmations or maybe other tools only to come full circle back to the same challenges? I would reckon to say that at least at some point in our life, we have been in such cycles, which can lead to great frustration, drain, and wanting to even just escape it all for a fantasy world someplace. If you have experienced these spaces, then you will find at the roof of your dizziness from spinning around and around you um, are your core beliefs. And oftentimes these little pieces of programming within us remain completely hidden and unknown until we get active on our spiritual path of discovery. I find that this is important to address, for not only can they keep us stuck, but they are oftentimes the reason that many tools will not work or work only temporarily for us. For example, your tummy feels unsettled, so you go and you get yourself some nice peppermint or ginger or other digestive tea. You feel better for a little while, but then the next time you eat, you are having an upset tummy again. And this cycle will keep repeating until you delve into the core of what is getting your tummy upset. The tea is merely a temporary way to soothe it, but it doesn't really take care of it. Now, as we progress on this concept, what we will find is that not only may our core beliefs be creating upsets and things that we don't digest well in life, but they also affect our bioelectric magnetic field and thus can put us at the mercy of the law of attraction also. Basically, if your core beliefs are in a destructive pattern, it will set your energy field to a sort of self-destructive vibration or a vibration that drives in destructive aspects. Likewise, if it is set 
to great happiness and success vibration, then that is what we will attract in. Rocky Crockfoss works with people through quantum physics and heart math principles to help them shift this field and thus shift their life. He works to help them identify the core beliefs that have perhaps laid dormant or gone unnoticed, but are surfacing through people and situations in our life. In my own work, I also deal with similar aspects of patterns that we have taken on or that we have had programmed into us. In delving into these aspects, I have also found that they are oftentimes at the root of long-term challenges and struggles that create frustration and feelings if we can't break through things, or feeling as if, I should say, that we can't break through things. And identifying and changing these patterns then become a big part of shifting the sphere so that we can start attracting pleasurable experiences of true enjoyment in our life. When was the last time you delved into your core beliefs? Are there areas in your life that you feel stuck and frustrated with? Do you feel like you're going in circles, repeating the same patterns over and over again in your life? Well, this week our guest is focusing on a component of compassion that's related to the aspect in my books of no more pain, which reminds us that we aren't meant to live in unending suffering, that our path of growth and development doesn't have to hurt. I'm going to take a short break, and when we return, I'll have Rocky Crockfoss sharing his work in identifying limiting patterns and how they affect our heart energy. And the song I have for you during our break today is called Dreaming with Wings. It's also known as Freedom, Freedom. It's by Claire Hedin. And if uh, you missed that show with Claire and I, you can go back and catch that in our archives. It was very early on, uh, way back in the early shows. <laughs> and... Um, you can catch that on my page of the Main Street Universe tab of my website, Jesse Ann Nichols George. And also you can catch up with Claire's work on her website at www.clairehedin.com. That's C L A R E H E D I N.com. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Listening, listening for an answer. Listening, listening 
Today. You were just listening to a song by Claire Hedin called Dreaming with Wings, also known as Freedom Freedom. And you can definitely check out more of Claire's work at www.clairehedin.com. That's C L A R E H E D I N.com. She's got a ton of great music, so check it out. Today I have with me a really interesting guest, and I think a lot of people are going to be very interested in this topic because I've had a lot of response to it over the week. And that is Rocky Krogfoss, and he's the creator of New Beginning Therapy, Healing, and Educational Services. Rocky has also authored the ebooks 10 Powerful Tools to Engage the Law of Attraction Daily and Men, Sex, and Food, Why Hearing a Woman Can Lead to Deeper Love. His work focuses on healing stress-related physical pain and emotional fear and pain, where he helps clients release negative core beliefs. Rocky has been healing stress-induced pain without drugs or health products on person, um, in person or via distance healing. <laughs> on person, if it's not on person, it's in person. Via distance healing for over 10 years. And he will be looking, or we're going to be looking at his work. Boy, I'm going to get my tongue together here sooner or later. <laughs> we will be looking at his work today in those areas of emotional he- energy healing and the real facts about the law of attraction and we're looking at getting to these core beliefs today. And you can certainly learn more about Rocky's work. best place to catch him is through his Facebook page at New Beginnings Therapy Healing and Educational Services. And Rocky, it is great to have you here today on Activating Compassion Radio. Thank you so much for having me. I have to have a laugh because... Uh, when you read those statements, I know that I prepared them. <laughs> and I could never, ever, ever be accused of being an expert in grammar. In fact, when I was in school, when it was grammar class, I always said, I don't know where she is. So, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, I was never much for grammar. <laughs> and yet I have that's, this new book. So, yeah. Well, it's, you know, that's a, what that's, I can relate to that because... I wrote books, and I'm not really much of a reader. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here with you today. I've, I've got so much to share with you. We we have such similar views on things. I'm, I'm sure that uh, we'll have a great conversation here, and I, I hope the people listening today really take note today because what we're going to share today is, is really critically important in making measurable, real, positive changes in their life, as I have witnessed in my clinical practice over the last 10 years. 
Well, and I definitely appreciate you giving us your time because I found you a very interesting person a while back when we had a chance to Skype and talk for a while and where I really got to know more about you and some of your your viewpoints and where you were coming from. And, um, you know, these aspects of getting to core beliefs are so critical today because I just feel like we have all of these things coming up in us as this spiritual growth. You know, the more we evolve and grow, the more that we learn what we haven't resolved. And so, you know, that is uh, leading us to, to come back to these core things to get to them. But before we kind of jump into the, the discussion part, I would love for you to share a little about yourself. You know, how did Rocky get to this point of doing the work that you're doing? Okay. Well, as with all people um, in, who are my clients, we, let's go back to the beginning, shall we? Let's go back to the childhood. In, in my life, um, when I was 10 years old, I was the oldest of five boys in a, in a family in a small forestry town. And uh, my mom and dad split up, and uh, my mom actually wound up leaving. Uh, that left me, uh, the oldest, who became, uh, I, I use the term, I became the beaten mother, in charge of uh, everything, cooking, cleaning, paying bills, buying groceries, and living in a house where 24-7 fear was uh, the order of the day. My father was very abusive and physically violent. As a result of, of, of experiencing that for all of my teen life, um, I developed a very acute sense of unworthiness. And I also developed quite an anger against the world because as soon as I stepped outside the door of my home, because my father was so massively dysfunctional, um, I looked and acted dysfunctional outside of the home, and of course that drew bullies galore into my life. So my life inside the home and outside the home was really, really, really uncomfortable uh, 24-7. And as a result of all of those beliefs being downloaded into my body about how stupid I was and how useless I was and all these things, that I'm worthy of punishment, that I'll never be anything good. So many, so many, so many layers. Um, it, it started to manifest in, in my 20s and 30s as, um, as anger. Uh, certainly I was, a, I was a really good athlete most of my life, and, and um, I was a very angry athlete and, and uh, won lots of championships but never, never had anybody to celebrate the championships with because I was such a, a mean and not very nice person. And then I wound up getting uh, married, and I, I went through a, a stage where I was um, just playing the field like crazy because I, I, I just needed to run away from my pain, and, and that's how I did it. But then when I found someone and I got married, um, we had this amazing, wonderful, very blessed indigo baby come into our life, and she changed my life from the moment she was born. And that began an awakening process, even the moment from, from the moment she was born. But I was still yet not awake at all. When I hit 38, and I had gone through um, eight years of marriage, and um, and it was over, the, the marriage was over. Um, I went through a stage where um, one day I was Rocky, the angry um, man. I, I used I use the term gruntuitous monkey. And um, one, the next day, it's as if the spirit guides just flipped the switch on me. And all of a sudden, I became this puddle of very, very, very fearful emotions, uh, 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 an emotional breakdown that was so horrendous, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. And there was a day, there was a day when I remember very clearly where I stood over and I saw a black vortex in front of me and I felt it. And it felt like the winds of hell going through my body. And it was calling me. And at that moment, I understood why people who chose to leave this planet would leave. But I'm a warrior soul. Even though I was in absolute fear and agony, I did what all warriors do at that point. I took my middle finger and I stuck it up to the, to the black vortex and I walked away. But that's when I knew that I had to do some healing work. And at that point, um, I did what everyone does. I went and saw a doctor. And uh, I don't need to tell you what the result of that was. It was less than impressive. And um, 
let's face it, doctors come into this kind of work with a toolkit with two tools when you need 50. So um, it's not their fault. It's just the way they're trained. So as a result of going through the medical debacle for a year, I realized that uh, this was not working and, and the pills weren't working. And I sat on my bed one night, and I, I accidentally, now remember, this I'm, I come from a very, very uh, warrior background where there's no God, there's no angels, there's no nothing. And you die your dust. And I sat on my bed, and I accidentally said, oh, my God, I need help. And it was shortly after that that this woman came into my life who was an energy healer, and she's a channeler as well. And she channels spirit guides. And we, we met and we started doing work and instantaneously I was drawn to her and to her work and to the channeling work and to the healing work. And I spent over 10 years with her and I spent over 350 hours with her releasing, 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 releasing layer upon layer upon layer of unworthiness, limited, fear-based, guilt, shame, anger, resentment, scarcity. The list is a mile long. And as a result of doing all that work, I became very interested. About halfway through that process, I became very interested in energy healing. In fact, my spirit guide said to me, and I've got a recording of it my, on my computer. My spirit guide, by the way, his name is Seth. Many of, many of you may have heard of him before. And he said to me very clearly, he said, Rocky, you are a healer. And I literally turned my head around to look behind me on either side, and I said, are you talking to me? And so um, um, it was kind of a joke there, but uh, um, he, he kind of shocked me. He kind of shocked me, and, 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 and I said, who are you talking to? And he said, I'm talking to you. He said, you are a healer. And he says, you have a gift. And I said, really? I said, well, what do you mean? And he started explaining to me what my gift is and how I work with spirit to provide an energy field which acts like a um, – like a, a very, very efficient mechanism to release electromagnetic energy in the form of emotions from the body. And, and, and that was very, very curious to me. So I, I, I went out, and, and in the course of the next month, I, I ran into five different women. I think it was four or five different women. Each one of them had serious migraine headaches. They, they'd been sick for days. They, they, they were in so much pain, it was unbelievable. And each and every one of them, all I had to do was put my hands on their shoulder and focus. And that's all I had to do. And their pain was gone in 20 minutes in each and every case. Each one of them had the same symptoms. They had um, dizziness when the pain left their body, and they had a cold sweat after the, the, um, the pain left their body. But their pain was completely gone. It was at that point that I started to study energy a lot more. And eventually I led into quantum physics, epigenetics, and emotional energy science, which is one of the most fascinating fields to study these days because it, it literally proves everything that we've ever known in the spiritual world about energy, emotions, and healing. It now We can now prove it. There, it it's, it's, it's absolutely provable right now so that I say to people that science is now our friend, not our enemy. It was, the, it was in the years gone by that science was our enemy. But... These days are very good days for people who are in the spiritual realm, alternative healers. The important thing for people to do nowadays is to understand the science behind it so that you can feel comfortable with the work that you do, but you need to understand how healing occurs. And, and my perspective has been taught to me, as I mentioned already, directly from my spirit guides and through my healer. So everything that I've been given has been given to me by, by entities outside of, of the human realm to facilitate healing at its most effective and efficient way. So that's kind of the, the long and dirty of my, of my journey. Um, the thing I'll add to that is, is that um, one might say that, um, you know, how did you ever get over the anger of your father? And I'll say to them, it took a long, long time. And I, I will say this, I had an experience four years ago. My father had been dead for about eight years. And I did a, an emotional release on, it was, it was like the final, the final release. It was so massive and it was so intense. I wound up crying for 20 minutes straight. I could hardly breathe. And when I was coming to again, when I was getting my breathing back, this 
hand came into my third eye vision, and it was a soft hand, and it had a light around it. And I, I reached up and I touched it. I was just, I was so exhausted from the from the uh, from the healing, and I touched the hand. And it was soft and warm, and I thought, oh, my spirit guides are here. And, and then I looked up. My eyes are closed, and I looked up, and I and I saw my father there, and it and nearly made me fall off my chair. And in a very kind and loving voice. My father in spirit, who was now an angel, he wasn't the human that he was, said to me with this beautiful voice, he said, Rocky, may I please speak? And I said, sure. And he said, I've come back to tell you something. And and, uh, and I said, yeah, what was that? And he said, I am so sorry for what I did. And it, it just made me fall into a puddle of more tears. And, um, then he said to me, he started explaining to me, he says, you know, he said, I know that you know that in fact what I did was for your higher good. And I said, I said to him, semi-jokingly, I said, unfortunately, yes, I do know that. And uh, But he said, it does not take away from the pain that you experience, and, I, and for that I am truly, truly sorry. But he said, I did my job. And he said, I know that you understand that because you wouldn't be where you are right now if you had not experienced that. And I said, yes, I, I, I do agree with that. I understand that at a karmic level. And he said, that's excellent. So he said, before I go, he said, I have one more request. Now, this is a man that I hated so much that I wanted to kill, okay? This, I really hated this man a lot. I, I wanted to kill him, but I never, it was not, it was, it was not in my makeup to do those kinds of things. It was not a not in my makeup to perform those kinds of things. And and this is so this spirit is looking down on me with this beautiful, soft, gentle voice, and he said to me, With your permission, I would love to be um, on your spirit team because as you know, the learning continues on both sides of the veil. I have much to learn from you, and with your permission, I would like to be part of your spirit team for the rest of your life. Do I have that permission? And with deep honor deep, deep, deep honor, I said, welcome to my team. I said, if you can be a student of mine, I said, this, this would give me great pleasure. So that's how things can go full circle in, 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 in life and on in, 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 in the other side of the, of, the, of the veil. Things can be healed, and things can be healed forever. And the perception of the reality that I live changed so much in my healing journey and the final um, nail in that coffin, so to speak, was when he came to me, and now the one man that I hated more than anyone else on the planet is now one of my spirit guides, and I just was honored to have him there. So I just wanted to share that with people. And I think that that's very interesting because there would be a lot of people that would be thinking, no way. <laughs> you know, you're, well, <laughs> he, well, of course he did they would. this. And, and yeah, of course they would, because we're, we're caught up in judgment. We're caught up in anger. We're caught up in hatred we don't understand fully how to heal and healing is the complete release the complete forgiveness of those who have harmed us but but there's a there's a perceptional thing that needs to happen in our world especially people who are you know sort of advanced thinking in in spiritual terms that everything that happens in your life happens for a reason and that you signed up for this and that's hard for people to understand It's, it's hard 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 for people to accept and understand that I signed up for all these beatings as a child? And I, really? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with that. Fair enough. I had trouble with it for 10 years myself. But in the end, I did see why I did sign up for all of this, where it served me, and why humans sign up for these things, because it forces the soul to advance into a state of love. Unfortunately, humans choose to suffer before they, they receive love, and that seems to be a human characteristic so when you've had enough of the, the, the pain, when you've had enough of the suffering, those that created that with you, because you have to buy into it, of course, um, are kind of heroes in a way in a play. We'll call, it, we'll call it a movie. You're in a movie. These are characters in a movie. And they forced you to the edge of the cliff, and instead of falling off that cliff and, 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 and ending it all, you decided to free yourself from the prisons of your own unworthiness, feelings, and beliefs. And ultimately, that is how life plays out in many, many ways. So if we can change our perception 
of what happens to us in our lives, instead of taking on victimized roles, instead of taking on roles of the war was me, instead of taking on roles as, God, does this ever end? There's opportunities to flip that around to say, wow, this is an opportunity for me to advance, but how do we do that? And that's what I want to talk to you about today, Jessica, or Jesse. And and there are and there are so many layers to this, Rocky, um, as well that I know from the light worker, angelic perspective, that you know oftentimes there is a spiritual person born into a family that will endure such things. Uh, they agree to endure endure certain things in their lifetime, specifically to give the rest of the family the opportunity to change. And Indeed. to realize something as your father chose to change, and some don't choose to change, even on the other side, uh, sadly enough. But I think this is a big thing. And you mentioned about emotional release and that your ability is to release through, uh, release electromagnetic energy through emotions. Now, why through emotions versus some other thing? I mean, we know. Hey, I'm stressed out. I can go work out and get some endorphins going, and you know that takes care of me pretty darn good. But why, why emotions as opposed to our thoughts or physical activity or something else? Why is the emotional release the key for you? The key for me is because of the science and the wisdom behind how healing truly occurs. As a result of my journey and releasing immense amounts of anger and resentment, I, I came to understand the nature of how we create our reality and how we can change our reality. Let's talk first about how we create our reality. Every, everyone listening probably has a pretty good idea that when you're born, you come into this world as a little baby, and I have yet to see anyone tell me that a baby came out of the womb with a gun and a knife in its hand ready to kill somebody. I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> little baby... Little babies come onto this earth with pure love. So if they become angry people or violent people, they have to learn that behavior. They have to learn anger. They have to, they have to learn programming. They have to have programming downloaded into them that causes them to walk away from the love and go to a darker side. So we are all programmed in many, many ways. Each one's different, but our perception of reality is based on two main sources of programming. It would be our parents and society. And we could go on and on and on about men and women. I've done a lot of work with women, as you know, um, on downloads that they've taken on. But when that information is downloaded into your body, Stanford University did a study that showed that 80% of your programming in your adult body is programming that was downloaded into your physical body before the age of eight. That means the inner child is running 80% of your programming right now. So if you take a look at your life up until the age of eight and you take a look at everything, not just the really obvious pain and suffering that you did as a child, but by many other forms of, of dysfunction as well, they all contribute to the programming. Now, why is the programming important? Well, first of all, let, let's, let me tell you where the programming exists, because a lot of people are stuck on the brain. And let me tell you, you can let go of this whole brain thing now. Like science has proven that the brain is not your mind. The mind is a separate entity, just like the subconscious mind and the superconscious mind. It's a, it's a separate entity of the wholeness of who you are. The brain is an extremely limited tool which is only capable of really doing one thing and that's keeping you safe in the physical reality. When we ask the brain to do a lot of work that it, you know that it's stressed to do, we get kind of wonky results. So this information that's downloaded into your body thus becomes a program. Now how you create your reality is very interesting. The quantum physics and, and, um, and, and epigenetics have all come together to sort of show one thing. Consciousness energy, which we, we in the spiritual world call the energy of one, that it connects us all, is referred to as many things in the scientific world. It's referred to as the ether field, the mind of God, the matrix. There's all kinds of names, but I'm just going to call it consciousness energy. So we're connected with this energy field 
and we are in fact an energy field. The physical body is an illusion, and uh, we and even Einstein knew that. So if you're if you're wondering about that, you can check out Einstein and 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 and, and Max Planck and, and many other scientists who who knew that the physical body was not physical. It's an energy field whose vibration has been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. Now this energy field is a state. It's it's always in a state of unlimited potential. It actually doesn't do anything until something happens to it. So it's it's like it's like water. When you add hydrochloric acid to water, there's a reaction. So this energy field does nothing until something mixes with it. And what mixes with it is information in the form of emotions that you've downloaded about either one of two things, your worthiness to have love or your unworthiness to not have love, or as we call it, fear. Either way, each one carries a frequency. So each bit of information merges with your consciousness energy field based on the experiences you're having in the now to generate a reality that you perceive to be real. So if you're filled with unworthiness beliefs about a number of things, that's the reality you're going to create over and over and over again. I don't care what you do, what kind of affirmations you do, what kind of energy movements you do, until you change that information, you're going to have that reality um, cycle over and over and over again. So what do we do? What do we do to change that? Well, as you know, Jesse, we do the core belief release. And in doing so, when you change the information that merges with your consciousness energy field to create the reality, of course you're going to change the vibration and you're going to change the nature of that reality. That's how you effectively and efficiently change a reality in your life to a higher state of balance, love, and harmony. Does that make sense to you? Well, it does. I mean, and and I think there's probably a lot of people out there going, okay, great, yeah, I get the fact that I need to change my belief. I get the fact that I need to think more positively instead of these negative thoughts. And no, that, that, I, that's actually that that's actually. I'll I'll just say this: when when <laughs> you use when, when you use the word they need to change their thinking, I'm saying no, that's absolutely not what you need to do. That's okay, what people so say. So this is what changes. we're here for because this is what yeah. people are thinking when they're starting to hear this, and and that's yes. what they've been programmed is that. Yeah. Okay, I got to shift my thoughts, but that's just so much easier said than done. Absolutely, because we're not changing the thoughts. Thoughts are a byproduct of your core beliefs. I'm sure you're aware of this, but Bruce Lipton wrote in his book that um, the subconscious mind is where 95 to 99 percent of your beliefs are stored, and those subconscious beliefs are what create your reality. It doesn't matter what you think. In your conscious mind, it doesn't matter what you do there. You're not going to affect a, a reality change until you change the beliefs. So how do you change the beliefs? Well, you do so through a, a process that is very kind and gentle and loving and very, very uh, safe, uh, a process that allows for emotional release of these uh, belief systems as they come to the surface from the subconscious mind, it's experiential. It has nothing to do with the mind controlling that reality. It's, that's just not the way it works. Jesse, it took me eight years to figure that out. I was so guy-minded, and uh, <laughs> yeah, but I but I was I was a guy-minded. I mean, I I operated in a very very linear world, and so for guys, this is hard work. I'll, I'll be honest, this is hard work. But I have men now doing it. Who are coming to me and they're they're letting go of their mind and they're opening their heart, which is you know something that was unheard of years ago, and they're opening their heart and they're allowing those feelings to flow, and guess what? They're experiencing massive releases of unworthiness energy, unworthiness beliefs, and they're changing their reality. This is the thing that people need to understand. You can change that reality. You can have things change. Like for example, I'll use a good example. There's a woman who came to me. And she was at work in a very, very, very abusive, in other words, uh, abusive situation from a boss. Uh, this guy should have been thrown in jail for what he did. It was that bad. 
And so she was subject to being a victim of these things, and she didn't know what to do, except she just went to work every day because she felt so unworthy. She didn't want to quit. And so she came to me, and what we did was we shifted and changed her beliefs enough about herself that she could just send love to the office, forgive this person for their massive insecurities and their projecting pain onto her. She learned how to block that energy, and she started sending love to the workplace. Within one week, she sent me an email saying that the most incredible miracle in my life ever happened today. She said, today, not only did my boss not come in and and make my life horrible, he brought me a letter of commendation for all the good work that I've done for all these years. And she just just smiled. She said, if I didn't see it, I wouldn't have believed it. But she said, what you told me to do, I did, and it worked. It changed my reality. I now believe in this stuff. So these are the kinds of things that are possible when you understand that going in and shifting and changing your belief systems about yourself and about others generates a a new reality. How does that sound? I mean, absolutely. It's, you know, it's going to shift and change as we do this. And it it sounds like, from what you're saying, that a lot of this really comes down to basically either feeling worthy or not feeling worthy of, of love. Uh, love being the key vibration and that manifesting in a lot of different forms, whether that be uh, finances or relationships or credit at work or whatever it is. Um, you know, those are all just different shapes and forms of love that come through to us. And, you know, I think. Here again, there's a lot of people that they try to approach it from this intellectual space, and they're they're saying, "I don't know how to get into the emotions. I don't know, uh, you know, to 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 be forgiving. You know, I don't want to forgive this person. They've been, yeah. you know, well, they, yeah. Well, what I, what I'll say about that is, and, and I'll be honest, um, when when Rocky, who knows all this stuff, needs help with certain emotional imbalances that still exist in me, you know, discomforting things that exist in me, um, I go and see a healer right away, Because, and I'll tell you why. To be present with uncomfortable feelings, uncomfortable um, thoughts and feelings about information that comes up about who you think you are, to be in that space and to be in a balanced space as a healer at the same time, I'm sorry, that's, that's just not, that's just too hard to do. That's why I say to people, you can go ahead and try to do this yourself, but good luck on that. Um, the reality is that's why we have healers on this planet, because you need a balanced energy that is, that is completely objective and does not forecast an outcome. You need someone that's just going to show up and be present with this energy and uh, and provide an energy field that will allow this energy to release at its own speed and time and pace in, in alignment with the physical body and the emotional body and the spiritual body. So I'm saying to people, if you think you're going to heal long-standing issues by yourself, um, good luck on that. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, I've tried to do this and I've tried to do that and I'm working on it and I'm working on it. Well, if you tried to do it and you tried to do it and it's still not working, what did Einstein say about insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again? Expecting a different outcome? And and the other thing, too, is um, when you're trying to do something, you're working from the the brain. When you're you're healing, you're not working from anything other than the heart. And it's, like I said, it's an experiential thing. It's very gentle. It's very loving. And that's the magical word here. There has to be an, a, a beautiful field of love that is devoid of an outcome. It's simply present. And in that space, the healing that takes place and the release of these emotions and the release of that information takes place in a field that is so gentle that the release is much easier than trying to figure it out any other way. Now, the other thing that needs to be added here is you can remove information from your DNA, your hard drive, as I call it, but what do you do next? 
well, obviously you have to replace that information with information that serves you. And that information generally starts with an I am. I am worthy of a relationship that, that is loving and kind and respectful, that does not have abuse, that, 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 that has honor and trust and, and values me and I value myself. Um, there's so many different things that we could talk about, but the I am is the, is the line that I use with my clients. I tell them to say I am and I ask them to finish that statement. And we, we, we keep working through the language of that statement until it 100% supports and loves them in the statement. There's no trying. There's no, I hope to get there. There's none of that language of, of hanging out in a, in, in, a, in a waiting zone. There's just mm-hmm. effective information that changes the frequency now. And the cellular body begins to react to that information immediately. And this is the cool thing about science, is they can prove that now. They can prove that emotional waves of energy directly impact the atomic structure, the cellular structure, and the DNA of your body immediately. So um, when you choose to love yourself, even on a temporary basis, you are beginning a healing process, but in order to be effective at having that healing be done effectively and efficiently, you do need to do the healing release work and replace it with information of love and support. And I think that that is a key to to remind people that we have the space and that space is going to be filled up with something. And it's best if we choose to fill it with loving vibration um, or elevated vibrations is whatever term people want to use versus leaving that space empty because if you take it out there's still going to be remnants of other things there that are then going to fill that space up Um, if you don't put it in, you know, don't put the loving energy in, so to say. Uh, That's true. I mean, if you use the computer analogy, it's the best way to practically and logically understand what you are as a human being. If you take a file out, what does your computer do? Well, it doesn't do much, does it? You know, it just kind of sits there and does nothing. And I've had an experience like that. I can remember one time I had a massive release of, of anger and, and guilt and shame. And I remember the next morning waking up and, and literally looking at the walls of my, my, my home where I lived and, and feeling like I had no idea where I was or what I was doing. And so that kind of freaked me a little bit. And I went and saw the healer again and, and I talked to the spirit guys and I said, why do I feel so empty? Like That's just weird. I felt like a computer that had no function. And they said, well, that's in fact what happened to you, was you let go of a whole bunch of information, but now we have to fill that space again. Because that space is empty. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it empty if you want, but it, it, you, you want what you, what you're he- why are you doing the healing? Well, you're doing the healing to replace that information with love, with, with information that supports and loves you, that, that forgives everyone around you, that, that caused you to feel that pain in the first place, Remember, it's a two-way street. You know, it's a karmic journey. So you forgive yourself, you forgive others, you love yourself, you love others, and that frequency has to have an impact on your reality because it's like changing the TV station. Yeah, and and it is going to have a, a reality. I think so many people are going through this aspect, and. They they are feeling that, okay, I've forgiven myself, I've forgiven others. And again, I think a lot of people do this on an intellectual level, but not an emotional level. Because I And I think the key for people to tell, and maybe you can confirm or not on this, is that if, if, they're, if they're still pondering it and it's still consuming their thoughts, they haven't released it on that emotional level. They've only released it on an intellectual level. Absolutely, 100% right. And that's why some people, you know, um, question healing because they say, well, I did, you know, I let it go, I let it go, and I still I still have all this, this stuff happening in my life that's, that's not very much fun. Well, that's because intellectually you let it go, but that that is, that is, that is only half the job, if I can use that term. You've got mm-hmm. to do the complete job at the emotional level, at the DNA level, at the informational level, 
um, and you've got to change the nature of the vibration that you're sending out through the law of attraction to the world by changing the information. And so that's where the work really begins and ends. And, you know, in my case, I'll just say this, um, that for the most part, um, when I did healing work with people, it didn't matter what they came to me for, whether they had physical pain issues, whether it was fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, joint pain, headaches, injuries from car accidents. It didn't matter what it was, shin splints. It didn't matter what it was. I always focused on the unworthiness information through the law of attraction that drew this pain to them. What was that pain trying to teach them? And in every single case, the pain left their body, and it changed their reality. And they were amazed. They were absolutely amazed. It's no longer an amazement to me. They, some of them call it a miracle. It's not really a miracle. It's simple science now. And um, with emotional upset, like the depression and, and uh, anxiety and, and uh, bipolar, this, this nonsense called bipolar, um, those are issues that take a little bit longer to work on core beliefs, but absolutely guarantee that you can you can be free of these debilitating uh, um, conditions with emotional energy release. It's it, it, I guarantee it, and I've done it for so long now. It's just it's just a, a no brainer. And I would say too, a sign that you know you've released on the emotional level is because I know for me when I've I've done the emotional release. Um, I feel this sort of clarity and I feel this sense of newness and a new energy that's like, wow, the world's really mine now. And yes. I, I feel like all this heaviness is gone from my life um, in it. And, and I've had a lot of big emotional releases going on. <laughs> Recently, yeah. matter of fact, I was mentioning to a friend of mine earlier today, and I, I was saying, you know, we're just uh, I'm drained on every level, and I know I need to go back in and put in the I am stuff now. But even prior to today, and I found it so interesting that it happened on the day I was doing this interview with you, which I, I tend to do these things anyways. But um, I was sitting in my vehicle today, and, and I don't know if you know, but I tour full time, so... I'm on the road full time, and I'm I'm about two weeks away from, you know, getting ready to start up workshops. And I've been doing other work with people along the way. So in one sense, the tour has already started. In another sense, it's just getting ready to start. And there's ten thousand things to be done, <laughs> you know, uh, yes. before that two weeks comes around. And and I'm sitting back and I'm thinking to myself, I I was going through some stuff that I've dealt with over the last year and a half. And I just broke down and started crying this morning. And the tears were just streaming down my face. Now, I'm a person that I release on an emotional level, but I don't always have the tears pouring down my face. Right. And they were just pouring out. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is like, <laughs> I can't think of the last time, you know, I've I've been in that space. And, and the funny thing was, was several weeks ago, I had a whole set of circumstances that went down anyway that landed me near the ocean um, alone <laughs> with my cat and uh, not going north, not going south, not going any direction. And the, the message was clearly, you're going to face emotion. And so that's what I've been working on for the last several weeks is facing all these emotions. And... You know, it's just so interesting. Like you say, it really does come down to a sense of worth. I mean, even if you look at the fears, you know, where do the fears come from? Well, they fear, we fear this, our worth. We fear not being worthy. Uh, it's a, it's definitely a core piece there. Yeah. And I can say now, you know, after going through this, it's just, I'm so grateful for this time. As much as I didn't want to be landed where I was, I'm really, really grateful for the time I've had to focus and to work on this stuff because I feel like I'm going into my tour with a whole different energy than I've ever had. 
And well, people are just showing up in my life going, I know you're the only one that can help me right now. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And that's how spirit works. So that's a beautiful explanation, by the way, of, of the, the release process. There's no way you can sit here and listen to the show and logically understand the release process. It is 100% experiential. It is indeed so freeing. And once it happens, once this volcano of emotions actually releases, yeah, you know, you have some tears. You might have some heavy tears and, and, and that kind of thing. But once that's done, there's no doubt that each and every client that I have, men or women, feel this lightness in their body. They feel they feel empowered. They, 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 it's, 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 a, it's an uncanny, it's clarity, it's, it's wisdom, it's, it's wow. It's, it's, it's such an, a neat experience because what you're really doing is you're saying yes to love. And, and when you experience that and you, you shed yet another heavy, dark, wet coat from your body and you feel lighter, you begin to understand how this process works and how freeing it is. And, and it's at that point you go, wow, now it makes sense to me. Because you can't, you can't understand it until you go through it. So I say to people, when they come, really, I'm going to explain to you the best that I can what's going to happen here. You're not going to really understand it logically. Um, you can, we're going to do the best you can. But you're going to have an experience that's going to free you, and it's going to feel wonderful. So I just say to them, are you ready to rock and roll? You know? And uh, they say, let's go on it. Let's get on with it. Because almost every client that comes to me, the first thing they say to me is, I- I'm done with this pain, whatever it is, relationship, uh, uh, money, um, abuse, uh, whatever, physical pain, mental pain, depression, whatever. I'm done. I'm done fighting it. There is a word. There is a word in our society, hey? There is a word in our society that we use way too much. The fight against breast cancer. The fight against those bad men who beat up those women. The fight, the fight, the fight. When are we going to understand that that kind of language at a mass conscious level across this planet only feeds gasoline into the dragon's mouth and continues to burn everything and create more of the same thing? We have to understand that the only thing that will heal anything on this is love. And that may sound like a corny statement, but we can prove it now scientifically that if you want to change and shift something on this planet, whether it's a war situation, whether it's pollution, whether it's corruption, whether it's governments and politicians, whether it's the news media or the, even the Western medical system, which is slowly but surely changing from within now as, as we speak anyways, but we have to focus on the love, not the judgment and the anger. There's too many organizations and spiritual organizations out there that are caught up in pointing fingers and being angry about things. I want to warn you that you are making the situation worse, even though you feel you're justified in your fight against something, you are contributing to the very thing that you are trying to let go of. I beg of you all listening today, if you're in a fight against anything, You've got to let it go. You've got to understand that that when you're in a fight, the law of attraction is very clear. If you're in a fight, the law of attraction will bring you more reasons to be in a fight. If you're feeling resentful, the law of attraction will bring you more reasons to be resentful. If you're hanging out in, in a world of scarcity, money issues, we, we all deal with that, and you're feeling that scarcity, that fear, the law of attraction will bring you more reasons to be in that scarcity. It's, it's hard work. It, it, at times, it's hard work to deal with these core beliefs that, that draw to us through the law of attraction, the very things that we're trying so hard to let go of. And, and it, it just doesn't make sense. You know, I'm, I'm letting go of this. I'm letting go of that, like we talked about earlier. Until we let go of the core beliefs at the level, which is the primary catalyst for creating our reality, you're you're beating your head against the wall. So for those of you who are created, who are who are committed to a cause to make things better, please understand and visualize this. Visualize sending out love to where the trouble is. Visualize sending love to the politicians. Visualize sending love 
to the men who are causing abuse on the planet. Visualize sending love to the women who are taking the abuse. Visualize sending love to the soldiers who are creating war on this planet. Visualize sending love everywhere because it's love, energy, without judgment, that will cause the energy fields to shift and change and create positive change on this planet. It's the only way we'll do it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I was just kind of reflecting, you know, as we look at these in our in our life situations, it's about saying, you know, I'm done fighting my money situation. I'm done fighting for relationships. I'm done fighting <laughs> this family dynamic, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I was reflecting back as you were saying that. I was like a year and a half ago <laughs> when a lot of stuff went down in my life. Uh-huh. I said to myself, I am done with this situation. Uh-huh. And I was removed from it. <laughs> and uh, yes. and I followed through does. on it. As I was removed from the situation, I followed through and said, yes. I am going to go with you, Spirit, and step out of this. And even though I still had some anger things to let go of, which which I can happily say I've let go of now, um, it's a matter of saying I'm done fighting this and I'm sending love to this situation. I'm sending pure love to this person because I know that what they're dealing with is maybe a bigger hell than I could ever imagine for them to be in that space, taking the action, making the choices, to choose to remain in the fight, so to say. You know, they're they're not choosing to step out of the fight. I'm choosing to step out of it. And, you know, I I can certainly send them love that at some point they'll want to choose to to step out of it. Um, This is a good example of mass conscious thinking. The number of things that come out of our mouth that we call normal thinking, normal words, normal phrases that we use to describe our reality, um, so many of them are so de-empowering we have no idea. Um, the one that I love to use in my workshops is the, is, um, the one where we ride in on our steed and our sword is high in the air and we're riding in on our steed and we're and it is better to give than to receive. Dun, 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 <laughs> and I, 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 it makes me pee myself laughing in the workshop because this is one that really gets people. And this is a core belief that many people are rigidly tied to, mostly through religious indoctrination from the past. So I say to them, and I take that statement, and I, and I put it, and I, I literally set it aside, and I say, Read that statement again and tell me, what are, you, what are you telling the cells of your body when you say that statement? So if I said to you, it is better to give than to receive, what, what, what am I telling the cells of my body when I say that? That it's, it's better for you to sacrifice and be without and that you're not worthy of having anything. I'm telling the cells of my body that I'm not worthy of love. And those are prime conditions for creating disease and pain in the body. If we look at the mass conscious energy of the Western societies, we are very subtly infiltrated with many self-deprecating statements that we use that we are completely unaware of cause us to go into uh, different forms of suffering and pain and limitation. One of the things that I do with my clients when I'm helping them heal is I will listen to everything that they say and I will point out all of the statements that are de-empowering, creating suffering and pain in their lives, and they're not even aware of it. And when they become aware of it, they find it even difficult to shift and change those statements, but eventually we get there. But they're aware of how they feel when they let go of those statements as well. And this is once again where we can understand that if we if we say something about ourselves or anyone else, that is in judgment, that is negative, um, or any other kind of negative vibration, you can feel it in your body right away. When you become aware, you can feel it in your body right away. It doesn't feel good. And if it doesn't feel good, why not choose to say something else? Why not choose to go, oh, God, you know what? Just a sec, God, I'm going to cancel that statement because I know 
it's the empowering me, I'm going to change that statement to, I am worthy of blah, 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 blah. And just see how your body feels. Because one of the things that the mass conscious energy has taught us in our society, in the Western societies in particular, has taught us, and if you take a look at Western medicine, this entire Western medicine process is based on this entire concept, which is run away from your feelings. Don't don't deal with your feelings. Well, um, and I think there's an aspect too of as long as they keep you feeling unworthy, they've got you under their control. We can control right. you with medicine. We can control you with what you're going to do with your life and how you're going to be. But if I say, you know, I'm worthy of something else, if I'm, you know, I I am worthy. A lot of times we don't need the medicine and we don't need what they're offering. <laughs> You know, there's no use for it. And I love your example of writing in with the sword because I had a vision yesterday and I was, my mind just runs through all kinds of things all the time of in very lucid ways and, and you know, things roll around and give me all kinds of things to work with. And I, I was reflecting on the aspects of, of where we depict angels with swords. And, you know, and people try to put angels as warriors, you know, warriors of the light. And, and it never felt right to me because I always thought angels are not about fighting because fighting would be a distortion and you can't be in an angel energy and be in a distortion. And <laughs> I said, you know, I thought to myself, I said, that sword has always been about cutting through the lies and deception. It's not been about fighting. Yeah, and it's actually not a weapon of destruction. It, it, um, my spirit guide said to me when I began my journey, they said that I had known many, many lives as a warrior and that I'd been in many battles and, you know, and I'd killed many, 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 many people. And I said, well, you know, I, I've kind of always known that about myself. But they said, in this life, they said, you are moving away from the sword of steel and you are picking up the sword of light. It is a sword, but it is a sword of light. And yeah. the sort of light only goes into the world, not in a fight, but in a place of love, spreading love to heal things. And there's no more fight in that. So, um, so if we were to look at Archangel Michael, for example, you know, this 50-foot tall angel with this gigantic sword, um, depicted with this metal sword, the truth is his sword is 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 designed to cut through. Um, as you mentioned, the, the cords that we, we attach to ourselves unwittingly from, from uh, relationships with uh, family and, and loved ones and uh, co-workers and that kind of thing, for cutting the cords that are toxic to our body. And that's one of the healing processes that I believe very strongly in as well. So you're mm-hmm. right. There is a lot of illusionary um, subtleties in our society that draw us towards fights, draw us towards negativity draws towards judgment. I mean, just take a look at the whole Christian Muslim thing, and that's just whacked out of balance so bad on the planet. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You it's, think? It's, you know, oh, well, you know, it's, it's been going on for, what, 500 years? You know, mm-hmm. uh, this whole Christian Muslim thing. And, uh, and you know, you bring the Jews into it as well, and, and now, now you've got, uh, you know, the, the, the perfect toxicity. However, I do know that in the United States, and in Muslim countries, and in Israel, there are, is a strong movement towards enough is enough. We want peace. The young people, the indigos, the crystals, the, the rainbows, they are the future of this planet. And, and I've been assured by many of the Ascended Masters that that will happen, that peace will come to this planet. We're going through a transitionary time right now, and yes, it doesn't look very nice out there. But everything's going to be okay. And this is why I implore people today to let go of judgments, let go of the fight, let go of all of these things that you think are noble in, in serving the betterment of mankind, and instead send love, because you'll see that that will, will, will quicken up the pace of peace on this planet. It'll quicken up the pace of healing people on this planet. It'll quicken up the pace of of people having food to eat on this planet. It'll quicken up the pace of people having homes that they can live in without governments and, and armies coming in and, and, and taking it away from them. The only way we're going to do that is with love. And so I, I implore people listening today, please 
just send love wherever. Do not judge anyone. Do not do not buy into the media garbage about these people are bad and, and, and we're right and we're and they're wrong. There's no such thing as right and wrong. There's only love and there's only we love everything and everyone. Please, please think this way. Feel this way. And and I think that that's true. And as I've told people, you know, and we've talked about in recent shows over the last couple of weeks about delving deep into those emotions, you know, you can't have felt hate or anger or resentment or any of those negative emotions without it originating from a huge amount of love. When when you when you look at um, that's a good point by the way I was going to bring that up earlier when you look at for example when that woman came to me and she had a migraine headache and in 20 minutes the pain was gone how is that possible well it's possible by what you just said it was an illusion that she was creating through unworth, unworthiness beliefs she was creating an illusion of her worthiness to have pain you know, we'll call it a mirage. And that's what she's experiencing in her physical reality, in her perception of reality. And it was very, the pain is very real. But when she lets go of the core beliefs at the root of it, suddenly the pain disappears. Which means, and my spirit guides use this term with me over and over and over again. It, it took me forever to understand it. They said, you are creating the illusion of pain. You are creating the illusion of not being worthy. You're creating the illusion of not being successful. You're creating the illusion of not generating love here. The, the right relationship, you're creating this illusion through yourself. As soon as you let go of the information that, that says you can't have this or you're not worthy of love, all of a sudden, instantaneously, as I said, epigenetics has just proven, your body heals now, right now. And so once the world understands this, it's going to take everything that we know and flip it on its side. And that's good for this planet. That's good because many institutions on this planet are whacked out, out of balance, and they can no longer exist in their current format. Take a look at the banking system. Take a look at, at uh, the, um, the world politics as it is right now. Something has to give. And what has to give is mindsets, belief systems, and, and the understanding of how love creates harmony on this planet, creates food for everybody, creates clean water for everybody, creates an earth where it doesn't matter what the population of the earth is, we know that the earth can support us. There's so many things that we need to understand about the power of love, the power of beliefs, and the human journey. Absolutely, and and it's gotten so twisted to where we've been told that feeling unworthy is the humble thing, and yet that's not true and and we've been told that feeling worthy of of all kinds of things is egocentric and selfish and greedy and this and that and and there's i think some very big differences because there's a difference between the sense of worth through love um and and greed for example because as you step more and more into your worth and you and you see the worth of everything around you and everything else also being worthy of eating and sleeping and, you know, having a roof over their head and things like that, then, you know, there there isn't the greed factor there. You know, they're really kind of different aspects that we're dealing with uh, because as you step into this consciousness, this loving consciousness that you're talking about, uh, really, you're... you're, you're the addictions fall away, you know. The addictions Indeed. fall away, and that's I've been doing a lot of work on that as well recently. With looking at, oh my gosh, I actually have an addiction to this. So now that I'm aware that it's an addiction, let's shift this. You know, let's change this. Um, and I, I'm worth so much more than this addiction. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I, and, I need I, 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 I need to I need to work on an addiction to Mocha Fraps, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that was pretty much it. You know, that was my thing was we get stressed, we get overworked. Yeah, it's 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 the addiction to different foods, and that's an addiction most people don't think of. It. For me, it wasn't the drug or the alcohol thing. Uh, it was, you know, it was different food things of, of being stressed. Um, 
and, and it's ironic things. when we hold on to those, you know, no matter what we do on a physical, mental level, uh, it doesn't go away. For example, if you've got this type of an addiction running and you haven't released and stepped into that worth pattern, you can do all the working out in the world and eat very minimally and you'll still gain weight. <laughs> And then that's why traditional psychology and, and psychiatry and and, uh, and a lot of counseling processes which work with the brain are ineffective because what you're trying to do is you're trying to motivate somebody against an addiction and you can't. The addiction is programmed into you through unworthiness beliefs. So when we finally get that straight, when we finally understand that, we're going to make real huge positive progress on everyone's unworthiness issues on this planet. In fact. I want to share with you, I just did a YouTube video with this wonderful, wonderful man, uh, an Israeli rabbi who is a, uh, a certified psychologist. And we did the video, and what he shared in his video primarily was that he became aware of something that was missing, a, a primary tenant of the healing process in his psychological training. He'd, he'd been doing psychology work for 20 years. And he recognized that emotional energy, emotional input, was clearly missing in the equation. And that's why we, we met, and he, he absolutely loved my work. He, he called my work the missing link in, the, in, in, in his psychology process. And so we did this video together where he, he talked about his passion now is, is to shift and change the world of psychology to get them to understand that their work is good, it's just incomplete. The work of doctors is good, but it's incomplete. The work of the medical systems in the world is good, but it's, it's very incomplete. It just needs to understand that there are other inputs that are necessary for whole healing, wholeness mm -hmm. healing. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to take a look at that video, I can send them a link. Um, it's a great conversation between between a man who's been a psychologist all his life and recognizes now the importance of emotional energy and somebody who's anything but a psychologist. I'm just a, uh, you know, I'm a guy that's uh, learned to walk the walk and talk the talk, but I have valuable information on the other side of the coin, and the two of us together provide a, a formidable uh, healing team. And as you know, Jesse, um, the work that you do is, is extremely effective because of the fact that you're going to the core of the problem. If you don't go to the core of the problem, how can you heal something? So um, for many of the people listening today, um, it's important to understand the nature of how you create your reality, the nature of the law of attraction, the nature of consciousness energy, the nature of how belief systems interact with your consciousness energy to create that reality. And if you're creating a reality that's uncomfortable, you don't point fingers out there and say, that person's wrong, that person's bad, that person's at fault. You look at inside yourself, you look inside yourself, and you say, wow, I just created an uncomfortable reality. Something inside me is uncomfortable. Something inside me is out of balance. And you don't do that with a finger pointing at yourself saying, I'm so stupid, I'm wrong. You say it with, with, with fascination to, wow, I discovered this cool thing inside me that's crying out for love. I'm obviously not loving it. So let's go inside and have a look-see, shall we? Let's go inside it with, with fascination. Where did this come from? Where did this belief come from? How is it playing out? What kind of words am I using to describe my reality? What kind of feelings am I having in my body when I encounter these kinds of, of situations? And let's be authentic. And authenticity is a huge part of the healing process. Now, I know as a man, and I know talking to men, that talking about feelings and authenticity is tantamount to just just chop my head off; it'd be less painful. <laughs> but it's but it, but it, <laughs> but it's not true. It's not true. I mean, I'm the ultimate warrior, and I'm telling you, if I can do this and I can get through this, and 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 recognize that it wasn't nearly as demeaning as it was what somebody would think it was. It wasn't demeaning at all. It was a beautiful process. And, um, you know, it's, a lot of men believe that uh, going into these healing processes is tantamount to emasculation. And I'm, I'm saying to them, I'm more of a man now than I ever was back then. And mm -hmm. um, 
So um, that's why I wanted to mention to you, too, uh, my book, uh, Men, Sex, and Food, Why Hearing a Woman Can Lead to a Deeper Love, because I've developed a, a really beautiful, really simple process in that book to teach men how to hear a woman without doing what, Jesse? Uh, how to teach men how to hear a woman without... Um... Without them doing what? Interrupting or fixing them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure exactly caught, what you were going to caught, caught, caught you off guard there. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. That's okay. So, it's good for me to so, be caught off guard once in a while. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, there you go. We men are trained to fix and interrupt and, and fix things because ultimately it means that uh, we, th- we believe that that's how we earn love from a woman. And, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, a woman wants a man who shows up who is emotionally available and as my wonderful indigo daughter pointed out to me a couple of years ago and coined the phrase all men, not all men, but most men are emotionally unavailable through no fault of their own they are programmed that way and I have discussions with men all the time about this now it's so wonderful that men are talking about these things now how they're programmed to operate in a certain way and when you say to them Just sit down and just listen to your beloved, and you don't have to fix her. You don't have to think about anything. You don't have to rack your brains out trying to figure out how to fix this woman's problem. You just have to sit there and quietly listen to her, and something magical happens at the end when she's fully vented. What happens to a woman when she's fully vented and she feels supported and loved, Jesse? She... You know, she she's just completely open and ready to receive. She's completely um, ready a, to be there. In a deep state of love. And the Spirit Guide said when a woman is fully heard, her heart center opens up and love floods out. In my book, I have a true story of a man who was constantly arguing with his partner. <laughs> That was sorry about that. Um, the the, um, the the man was arguing with his with his beloved, and he really loved her. But they were arguing so much that he was thinking about ending the relationship. And the long and the short of it is, I told him that I believed he wasn't hearing her, and he looked at me like I was from another planet. And um, and I taught him what I call the chin and hand challenge, which is basically a system whereby he takes his chin and he parks it in his hand. And he shuts off the fix corrector, make better. He opens the radar and he, he closes his mouth. And he listens to her. And in the story, I won't ruin the story because some of your viewers may be interested in, in buying the book. Um, there are some magical benefits that come to him. Thus, the title of the book: Men, Sex, and Food. So you guys can figure that. You guys can figure out the rest of what what happened there. But <laughs> but the the reality is that exactly what I told him what happened happened that her heart center opened up when he didn't fix her, when he didn't interrupt her, and he just chilled and he relaxed and he listened to her. He did two things. He showed her that he was loving and supporting her and he was listening to her and he was actually learning things about her that he never heard before, which is an act of into me see, which is what a woman is begging for from her guy. Mm -hmm. When a man learns to listen, you create into me see. And guys, that can only mean one thing. (laughs) Really, really naughty sex and your favorite food handed to you on a silver platter. I don't know what else you guys need for incentives to learn this process, but I'm just going to leave it at that. (laughs) It's so true, the the listening and you know, of course, that opens up to the other work you've been talking about, Rocky, which is the the aspect of letting go of the judgments and the fighting, and um, you know, it just opens us into this other loving space. And and in doing that, when men do that and they listen, it creates a trust for the woman, and she stops being in that neurotic oh, my God, what's happening to our relationship living in the future freaking out space? 
because when they can really listen, she feels like she can really trust. When she feels like she can trust, she doesn't have all these other things. And, of course, that comes back to she feels valued and she feels worthy and uh, all of all of these aspects. And, and so you remove basically the issues of the relationship in that process. I, I couldn't agree with you more, and and, and this 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 process of, of into me see, um, like you say, values and validates and acknowledges the woman's um, um, contribution to the emotional state of the well-being of the relationship. It creates trust, but it, it also helps the man to begin to unravel this. I call it the the walls of Jericho around his heart, because. That's what men do is you don't cry, you suck it up, you keep moving forward, and you just get out there and you just hunt and you gather and you bring home you bring home the beef and then that's just your job. Well, sorry, that's never been your job. It's never been that way. It's always been more of a, a loving, equal process. And uh, this process is the first step. I call it the first step in shifting and changing your relationship to a much higher state of love that... that Really, each each person, the man and the woman, truly are longing for. They're just lost in a sea of old programs, consciousness beliefs that I call the gap. Uh, the, the, what men believe about what their job is in relationship, and what women believe about what they need to do to to have the relationship they want, are create this gap, and I call this gap um, the the sea of of of, of uh, what I think you call it neurotic feelings, and I think that's a good way to describe it. And um, what I do in the book and what I do in my workshops is I cr- create what I call a bridge between the gap so that you can meet in the middle and you can begin to understand what each other person needs from each other from a point of view of understanding it and connecting to it in a way that you go, well, how come I didn't know this before? This is so easy. Well, because... <laughs> Yeah, it truly is when you think about it, don't you? It truly is. It, what could be easier than sitting there and putting your hand and your head and your 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 hand and, and put, putting your chin in your hand and just sitting there and listening and quietly listening? Well, what could be easier than that? And you don't have to fix anything. And you know you're going to be loved as a god after that. You know when when you know that you just do it. You just go. Wow, and, this is so easy. And the key is that genuine, actual listening. You, you know, go. not just the uh-huh, 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 right. but that actual listening that's there. And there's so many times, and, and I've, I've told them the same thing, just pay attention, just observe, just listen. Because, and, and both people, because they, they go, I don't know what to get her, I don't know what to do for her, I don't know, <laughs> you know. If you just paid attention, you would have seen where her eyes sparked up, yeah. someplace that you were at you would have seen the times that she softened in your arms. You know, and 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 it is those things that then make you remember, oh yes, when we went to this place and we went to that and it was magical and it was like this and why was it like that? Because you you created something that you could have only created had you listened. That's true, my dear. And and it was the aspect of listening. It wasn't the amount of money. It wasn't that you got a suite versus a rustic cabin or any of that. It was the yeah. fact that you listened. Yeah, I was going to say that if I had a dime for every time I heard a man say, you know what, I bought her this and I bought her that. I get her flowers. I do this and I do that. I do all this stuff for her, and it still sucks in this relationship. What the hell am I supposed to do about this? I said, well, you, could try, you could try listening to her. And um, what the hell are you talking about? I listen to her. No, you don't. You don't even know what I'm talking about. So would you like to learn this? Would you like to know how to have that relationship come into a place of harmony and balance where the love is is shared and and, and love can actually grow? And you don't have to go out and buy her everything because you're trying to compensate for not being emotionally unavailable. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is, is that how men are trained to operate in a relationship and how women are trained to operate in a relationship has a gap. And that gap is something that can be easily bridged when there's a yeah. willingness to go there because the the part of your heart that is so blocked through your own belief systems and through the belief systems of society and everything else 
there's a wall that can come tumbling down so easily and it creates so much joy and peace and harmony in your life. Why would you not go there? You know, well, I think so many men have been programmed that, you know, if she wants to talk, that's really bad. <laughs> that just means drama and that just means, you know, that just means I'm in trouble. <laughs> so, yeah, I, it's, that programming is run deep and, uh, and, and it comes back around, as you say, in these amazing ways when we're willing to let go of the programming that this doesn't have to mean drama. If I just listen, I'm going to learn a whole lot here. And that's yeah. going to that's gonna help me out a whole lot. And and, and men are programmed to operate. And in, in, in when men deal with men, what do they do? They, 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 they jump all over each other. They stab each other. They, they call each other idiots and stupid stuff like that all the time. And so men are so used to being attacked that, that when a woman is going to talk to me, they feel like they're going to be attacked. So they shut down right away. And the reality is, is that's not what's going on at all, not even close. But that's what men expect. That's how men perceive that. So there's so many different aspects to this, this, this gap that can, be, that can be transcended with such ease and grace. Now, that's one of my, one of my missions in, in, in my healing work uh, moving forward is just to bring that awareness to, to couples that that um, this gap that exists that you don't think there's any way to, to, to bridge this gap. You just can't you can't understand how to bridge this gap. There is a very easy way to do it. And it, it starts with the heart. And you know what? My experiences with men is I can get a man, I don't care where he's from, what he's doing, if he's going to pay attention at all, unless he's completely shut down, I can find a way to get him from his head to his heart in probably an hour or less. And, you know, when, when you consider that uh, he's never gone there ever, that's quite a statement. But, you know, I've had to do it myself, and, and I recognize where the cracks in the cement are that allow for a man to feel safe and vulnerable himself because men's insecurities are massive because of the way men treat men on this planet. Um, we're always defending ourselves. And I know that women are always defending their feelings with men. I know that mm-hmm. to be true. So there's lots of things that we can do to help people heal relationships. There's lots of things that, that, that I can do to help people heal physical pain, guaranteed. There's lots of things that I can do to help people heal depression, uh, anxiety, severe stress, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's all easily healed. All you need to do is show up and be authentic and be willing to take a look at things a little differently than your traditional mindset has taught you, you know, that you need to go in and you need to replace a part for your body, and that's going to fix it. Well, no, it doesn't. The body can heal itself, period. End of story. Thanks very much for showing up. Drive home safely. Your body can heal itself. We know that to be true, but... What processes do we need? Well, you know, Jesse, as we talked about quite a bit today, that's the process. The process is, is, a, is a field of love, of receiving more love into the body through different um, processes that, that I use, through different um, um, uh, healings of, of belief systems, through awareness, through epiphanies, through um, the recognitions of where you de-empower yourself, the recognitions of where you are worthy of love a lot more than what you give yourself credit for. There's so many different things that come up in the healing process, and and uh, you know this is one beautiful way to share it with with your listeners. Yeah, and and there are so many layers here to things, as you say, Rocky, um, in this, and it and it does wrap around to these fundamentals that we've been talking about today, and certainly if anybody has joined in partway through the show, I do encourage that they they go back and listen to the whole thing and grasp because it all tied around and tied together. And I want to give you, because we're just like winding down to the last part of the show here, I want to give you a chance to let people know how to connect with you and to let them know, um, you know, I don't know if you have any events or things like that going on or workshops or things that you're presenting at, but... Um, anything like that that you want to share? Well, in Vancouver, you know, that's that's the only area that I'm doing it right now. But I'm, I'm, I'm I know that I'm going to be traveling to California pretty soon. 
I'll share that with you privately. But um, basically, I do distance healing now. And um, if anybody wants to um, have a free consultation with me, I welcome that. Um, they can get a hold of me through the good old-fashioned email at stressfreeme99 at gmail.com. That's stressfreeme99 at gmail.com. You can also find me. I have a web presence at rocky.branded.me. Rocky.branded.me. You can get a hold of me there. Or you can call me direct at 604 Five one zero zero seven two one in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and uh, I'm also available on Skype. Um, I can send you the information on how to get a hold of me on Skype, um, and I would love to speak to you, and I would love to share with you and help you move forward in your life with whatever's going on in your world now. Um, like I said, I guarantee success if you if you show up and you're willing to show up and talk to me about it. That tells me that you're ready to do the healing, and I. And I really appreciate that. So that's what I want to share with your, your listeners. And, and I know you got to get going and do some other things. So um, <laughs> I'll, I'll just say thank you so much for this opportunity to speak with you. You're really an amazing, lovely, kind, loving woman. And uh, you're very, very talented. And, and I think that you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much for having me on. You know, it's been a pleasure, Rocky, because I think you just really carried this message in a way that just goes, uh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> it's, it's nicely simplified, and it's nicely brought into these core aspects uh, of it. And I think you're doing some really amazing work with people and helping to shift the energy on this planet as well. And so I greatly appreciate your time with us and you sharing your work and your your thoughts because you do bring in how this connects on a scientific level for people. It's not just the woo-woo like, okay, say I am this and that's it. it you know, you really have the backing in these other areas and, and that is so useful for us from our brain who wants to get on board and work with this process, <laughs> even though it has to accept it's not in charge of this process. Um you know, it, it helps it to understand so that it can support it and yeah. support our emotions and releasing. And so, I again, I greatly appreciate your time. It's been such a gift to have you here. Thank you. I'll leave you with one last thought. One of my dreams is to do different radio shows. I'm already doing one in England um, where we do distance healing right on the air, and we have callers call in, and we do the healing, bing, bam, boom, right now. So I want, to, I want to leave you with that thought. I'd love to do a show like that with you at some point in time, and I'll leave you with that thought. I I would love to do that. I would love to um, bring you back on and, and allow you to do that. Absolutely. Well, you know, I'll, I'll join you in that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Rocky. Thank you. And to all the listeners, thank you so much for paying, uh, for joining us today. I appreciate it. And as we move in and going on here, it's been great to have Rocky with us. Next week on the show, we're going to delve into some more very, very interesting aspects that that are really going to give your mind something to think about, (laughs) I would say, I guess. And that is the work of Lewis Harrison, and he's going to be sharing his work in applied game theory. And this is fascinating because there's there's foundations of different things that also play into law of attraction and other other universal laws when we look at the game theory aspect. Also, my books on relationships have been released. Uh, they've been out for a little while, and you can purchase any of my books through my website, Jesse Ann Nichols George. And I should mention that my relationship ebook is available for only ninety nine cents this month. So. If you hop on over the website, you'll find the code to use to get that ebook, and uh, you'll be able to, to go right in and take advantage of that. And there's a lot of great insights for helping to create your perfect relationship, and uh, that that's available through the end of February. I am in motion with the Compassion Tour right now, and I have been working with some private individuals. Uh, with people helping to bring the healers out and get the healers past their humps. And that's been part of my tour uh, aspects that I'm doing in my compassion work. 
and opening up. I have workshops that are starting again in as little as two weeks in the Ojai, California area. Also, there will be events going on in San Francisco, as I mentioned, going into Portland, going into Leavenworth, Washington, going over into Denver, Colorado, South Dakota, um, still working on some possibilities around the Kansas City area, um, going into uh, Illinois, going on up into Traverse City, Michigan. Again, this year I'll be on the East Coast as well, doing things in New York and Maryland and uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Massachusetts and Rhode Island. <laughs> I may be out on the Cape. I have somebody working on some stuff for possibly being out on the Cape. and So I'm going to be all over the place. And you'll just have to watch as those venues keep getting put up and put into place for that. And you can follow everything on my website, Jesse and Nichols George, the number one dot com, including video tips that I have that I put up every month and archive shows like the one of today, which will be available, you know, shortly. And, and I usually have the YouTube version done up within one to two weeks, sometimes sooner than that. And I do want to mention don't forget that we've got several shows here on Main Street Universe throughout the week. Monday nights is Randy Goldberg doing Vedic Astrology. Tuesdays is Susan Weed who's sharing her work in herbs and natural plants, and she's actually doing a series right now called 13 Trees. And then Wednesday nights we have our flagship show, Daniel and Janice on that. They have various things that they have going on. And that is now being backed by Darren Bouquer, Spiritual Insights. So if you're ever looking for just a great reading and some spiritual insights, Darren's got it going on. You might want to check that out. Again, that backs our flagship show on Wednesday nights. And he's a reader actually at Mountain Louvaux in New Orleans. So he's, you know, he, he's doing pretty good <laughs> reading in some of the top places. And then Kevin Baird is going to be popping in periodically with uh, some of his new companion things that he has going on. Janice is going to be doing some things in her own show, Woven Green. Jim and Ashley Cash, they're doing their own show about once a month, so you can catch archives through the Main Street Universe Network here on Blog Talk Radio for that. And this is Jesse and Nichols George. I want to thank you so much for being with us. And, and thank you to everybody who's listening, not only through Blog Talk Radio, but those streaming live on PEN, known as Pair Encounters Network, Stream Finders, Talk Stream Live, and those catching our podcast at iTunes, TuneIn.com, and those catching the YouTube version of our show. Hey, I look forward to seeing you back here next week as we delve more into activating compassion. Don't forget that if you've enjoyed my show today, share it with others. It's going to be available at this same link in our archives. I'm going to leave you with the song Yearning For, also known as Over and Over by Shemshai. And again, you can check out all of Shemshai's work at www.shemshai.com. That's S-H-I-M-S-H-A-I.com. Thank you so much. I look forward to to seeing you again next week right here on Activating Compassion Radio. May you enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a truly amazing week. And if I could see what makes me blind I would soar to the edge of my mind And to touch what seems unreal Just to show you the way that I feel we are in time with time One with season of change inside And we are in tune with the tune Caught in a balance of sun and moon Oh, deep inside The light within Shining to show you it's here to begin When all I have is all I need I will soar to the edge of eternity And we see in eye to eye One within love to be for the divine And we're walking hand in hand Caught in the balance of God and man Learning to walk just a little bit slower Whispering secrets I bet you can't keep it No turning back now This time we reveal it Once you are another All will discover The 